Hi everyone, it's great to be here with you again today. This is James Doherty, and we're going to be focusing on an important workout today for anyone interested in designing classic architecture. We're going to be working on laying out the basic proportions for the five Roman orders of architecture that were originally compiled by Giacomo de Vignola in, during, during the Renaissance in the 1500s. This uh, system of laying out the orders of architecture is the basis for many, many beautiful buildings that combine to create fantastic places throughout Europe and many places around the world. Architecture that's designed with these orders tends to show a really harmonious way of transmitting visually a building's weight to the ground. And you see these uh, orders being employed not just in Europe, but in America too, for example. In Charleston, South Carolina, there's fantastic usage of these orders and creating a very harmonious environment. So what we're going to be using today is some, some very simple tools, some very straightforward tools in drawing by hand. So we need a parallel bar, we need a, a triangle, a straight edge, just a pencil to draw with, and then the book that we're going to be using is actually the American Vignola. And so in the American Vignola was written by, by William Ware in the late 1800s. Um, and in this book, he's basically compiling a set of rules that were transmitted to him by Richard Morris Hunt, a great New York architect, who had brought kind of an easier method for drawing Vignola's original orders back from uh, the Ecole de Beaux-Arts, where he had been studying. So we're going to follow this kind of simpler process for laying out the orders that William Ware talks about in his book. Um, so first what we're going to do is we're going to lay out a baseline for all of the columns. And then next what we're going to do is mark the basic column diameters. And so what I'm working on here is basically an 11 by 17 sheet of paper or a A3 paper if you're, if you're working in European sizes. And uh, for my basic column diameters, I'm laying out uh, 18 millimeters for each column diameter. You can basically lay out any diameter you want, and once you've got your diameters established, the, the rest of the columns are going to be in proportion to those diameters. But uh, just for kind of ease of fitting it onto the paper, I'm starting with 18 millimeters each. It also, the 18 millimeters, 18 will subdivide nicely for us as well. Next, we're going to draw the vertical center line of each of those columns. So we've taken each of those diameters, divided it in half, and now I'm drawing a vertical line that's basically the, the, the center line of the column, kind of the center of where the, where the weight of the, the building would get transmitted through the column to the ground. Now we're going to take each of those bases, each of those base diameters, and divide them into six equal pieces. So again, by starting with 18 millimeters, it just divides really, really nicely into six. So take your base for each of your five orders and start by dividing it into six equal parts, three on each side of that center line. Now what we're going to do is take and divide the outer sixth in half for each column. And so what that's going to do is it's going to give us the diameter for the top of the column. The bottom of the column is going to be wider, and then as the column goes up, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to begin to get narrow and taper and, uh, and become narrower at the top. So dividing those outer six in half gives us that, that upper diameter. Next what we're going to do is create kind of a measuring scale for ourselves that we're going to use to be able to measure the heights of each of the different orders. And we're going to base that again on that column diameter. The different orders are different numbers of diameters tall, and that's what gives them kind of their different character. They've each got different proportions. So the, as, you, as we kind of work our way to the right across here, you're going to see the columns are going to get progressively taller in relation to their width. So we're going to mark off 10 diameters here on this little measuring, measuring paper. And so for the Tuscan, it's going to be 7 diameters tall. The Doric, it's going to be 8 diameters tall. For the Ionic, 9 diameters tall. And for the Corinthian and composite, they're both going to be 10 diameters tall. Next, what we're going to do is draw a horizontal line at the top of each of the columns. And that's basically going to be the, also the lower line of the entablature. The entablature is essentially the big beam that sits on top of the columns. And so we're going to draw the bottom of that beam. The top of the column and the bottom of the beam are, are that same line. Now what we're going to do is make a, a larger measuring scale. What we're going to do is use this bigger scale. We're going to divide our scale into five equal parts for this, this next step. And we're going to be using this five-part scale to lay out the heights of all of the entablatures. So proportionally, they're uh, all similar. 
essentially if you take the column and say that's four parts, one of those four parts is going to be the height of the entablature. So there's kind of a neat method you can use here. If you've got a scale that we divided into five equal parts, if you lay one end of that scale on your baseline, the base of the column, and where you get number four mark there, your fourth part, right at the top of the column or the base of the entablature, then you continue on up where the fifth part gets marked. That's essentially the top of your entablature. So one by one, we're going to go across and mark that. We're going to lay the, the end of the scale on the baseline, the fourth step of the scale at the top of the column, right, in that, right on that center line, and then we're going to mark where the fifth step on the scale is, and that's going to be the top of the entablature. So you can see as the columns get taller proportionally, the, the entablature essentially gets taller using this method also. This is the ionic we're doing now. And you see the Corinthian and composite are going to be the tallest of all. Here's the Corinthian. And lastly, the composite. Now what we're going to do is mark the heights of the column bases. And these are all actually the same. They're actually going to be a half a diameter tall. All of our column bases will be one half of a diameter tall. So we can mark that one time on the, the Tuscan one on the left, and then just use our straight edge to extend the lines all the way across. Now we're going to mark the heights of the column capitals. And so the, this uh, depends on that scale of sixth again. We can basically use, uh, use one diameter and, and divide it into six pieces. So for the, the Corinthian and composite, those are actually going to be seven sixths tall. So a little taller than one diameter. And then the, as we're working our way kind of toward the left on this one, the ionic is going to be two sixths tall. And then for the, uh, for the Tuscan and the Doric, it's going to be three sixths tall, or, or a half a diameter tall for the capital. So we've got kind of all of our basic divisions here now. We've got the height of the base, the height of the column, the height of the capital, and the height of the entablature. And now what we're going to do is start to subdivide the entablatures themselves. And so it's interesting. The, uh, the number of subdivisions of the entablature is very similar to the number of diameters of the height of each of the columns. So the Tuscan is actually, we're going to start by dividing that into seven pieces. So that's going to be the entire entablature. We're going to divide it into, into seven, seven equal pieces. Using that basic same method we used with a, a scale bar um, to, to mark the height of the entablatures originally. So we're going to basically put the bottom of our scale on the baseline of the entablature this time. And then, so we said that the Tuscan was seven pieces tall. The, the uh, Doric is going to be eight, eight pieces tall. So just checking that, making sure we've got eight pieces. Now the middle one in the middle of the ionic is going to be nine, nine equal pieces tall. So we'll measure that off the same way. Marking the baseline of the entablature. And then setting the base of our scale on that uh, on that baseline of the entablature, putting the the putting the ninth marking of our scale up at the top of the entablature, marking on a diagonal all nine of those steps, and then taking our straight edge and transferring those marks across to the center line. And in that way, we can pretty easily just graphically divide that entablature into nine equal parts here for the ionic. 
And for this one, actually, for the ionic, ionic what we're going to do is actually go back in and subdivide each of those nine one more time. So we're going to end up with 18 subdivisions, actually. So start with nine, and then you can actually just by hand there subdivide them all in half to get 18. And then we're going to use the same method again for the Corinthian and the composite, the two on the right there. And those are actually going to be 10 subdivisions, as we said earlier. So we're going to use the same method, extend out that bottom line of the entablature, put the tenth marking on our scale now at the top of the entablature on the center line, and then put the bottom of our scale on the baseline for the entablature, mark off 10 markings on the diagonal, and then transmit those markings across to the center line. So just cleaning things up a little bit here before we start the, the next step. Next, what we're going to be working on is, yeah, just cleaning things up a little bit before we move on to our next step. Next, what we're going to do is actually, just to, to give ourselves a sense of proportion of each of the columns, we're going to mark the lower diameters of the columns, and then we're going to go back and mark the, the higher diameters of the columns just to get a kind of a feel for the width of the column in relation to the height that we've been laying out. And what we're going to focus on here when we're laying out the widths of the columns is just the kind of a straight vertical line. Um, it, what's gonna, what would happen if we continue on to kind of fully lay out these columns in all of their detail? Essentially, the, the base bottom third of the columns is typically got vertical lines. And then the top two thirds of the column is basically got a, a curving in toward that uh, that in toward that top diameter, which is narrower, and that curving is called entasis. It's kind of a graceful, graceful curve tapering rather than just a straight line tapering from the bottom diameter to the top diameter. I think we'll be focusing on kind of the more detailed laying out of column orders in a future workshop. But here what we're doing again is just that quick basic laying out of basic proportions of the columns. Now the next thing we're going to do, because we're getting ready to, to subdivide our entablatures, uh, what we want to do is extend the inner and outer column diameters um, on, the, on the outside um, up past the entablature. And so essentially what's going to happen is the, the base of the entablature is going to line up with the inner column diameter. The outer column diameter is useful to have to mark some things also, as you'll see. So we're basically just extending those column diameter lines up across the entablature. Okay, now we're starting to subdivide the entablatures. So for the Tuscan, we divided it into seven parts originally. And so the bottom of those, there's going to be three main divisions of the, of the entablature, the, the architrave, the frieze, and the cornice as you're going up. So for the Tuscan, the architrave, the bottom one is going to be two pieces. The the frieze is going to be two more pieces, and then the, uh, the cornice at the top is going to be three pieces. So that's for the Tuscan on the left. For the Doric, the second from the left, the, uh, the architrave at the bottom is going to be two pieces. The frieze is going to be three pieces, and the cornice at the top is going to be three pieces. Now for the, uh, for the ionic here, because we divided it into those 18 segments, what we're going to have then is the architrave. The bottom is going to be five of those 18, five pieces. And then the, the, uh, the frieze is going to be six pieces, and the cornice is going to be seven pieces. And these kind of proportions were just worked out over, over hundreds of years with the trial and error to find kind of graceful, graceful proportions for each of, each of these orders. And they actually varied a lot in antiquity. So if you go back to ancient Greece or ancient Rome, they, uh, there's a lot of variation. And even in the Renaissance, there's a lot of variation. And so 
what Vignola and uh, William Ware were basically doing was, was establishing kind of a really good kind of a medium set of proportions. Um, and then for the Corinthian and the composite, we got those divided into 10 pieces. And so it's going to be uh, uh, the, the, the uh, architrave is going to be three of those pieces. The frieze is going to be three pieces. And then the cornice is going to be four of those pieces. And now what we're going to do is start to work on some of the projection of the cornice. The top of the cornice, the, the, the top of the entablature, which is the cornice, essentially projects outward. And uh, so what we're going to do is start at the, the base of each of those cornices, where the inner column diameter intersects with the baseline of the cornice. Use our 45 degree triangle and draw a 45 degree line going outward. Now once we've got that, we're going to work on the Tuscan one first. We're going to take the cornice and subdivide it into four equal, equal layers. And so the top of those four is going to be the, uh, um, the cyma it's called the cymatium. It's basically an outward kind of uh, leaning molding at the top, the top of those four layers. The, the middle two is going to be what's called the corona. And that's basically, you can see there, it's a little kind of a vertical vertical molding that comes straight down. That's the main thing we're going to lay out for each of the orders right now is the, is the corona. And uh, the corona is basically important because it, it's designed to catch light. The, that cornice is basically casting a big shadow, but the corona, because it's got a vertical face to it, catches the light and, uh, and creates a really kind of a bright stripe at the top of the entablature, which is really important architecturally to mark the top of a building. So the, the Doric is interesting. The, the Tuscan, you saw that uh, the, uh, the corona basically comes straight down from that 45 degree line that we drew. Um, when you um, do the, the, uh, the Doric, what we're going to do is basically draw that 45 degree line all the way up to it. It's the top of the entablature, the very top of the cornice, and then draw a line down. And, uh, and that's going to catch the outer, outer layer of our, of our corona. And for the, the Doric, we basically divided our, our uh, cornice into four equal parts. And so the corona is going to be the, the next to the top of those. The Doric order also has uh, what are called triglyphs. They're basically kind of blocks that sit right over the top of the columns. And, and there's, there's one or more in between the columns as well. They're essentially meant to look like the ends of beams sticking out and, uh, and uh, are a holdover from earlier wooden forms of architecture, but basically graphically they look like kind of the end of a beam st sitting out over the top of the column. Um, so the the uh, basically the center lines of those uh, of those triglyphs. Basically, there's going to be one sitting on the center line right over the top of the column, and then if you start where the uh, at, at the base of the entablature, draw a 45 degree line up to the left, like you just saw me draw there. Um, that's going to give us the center line where that intersects with the, the, the top of the frieze. You can, that's going to be the, essentially the center line of the second uh, triglyph. And the width of a triglyph is going to be one half of a column diameter. And then basically the, the space in between the triglyphs is going to be square. Over the top of each of those triglyphs, up in the up in the uh, up in the cornice, you can see I actually drew. It's called a mutule. Also, there's another little block basically that sits right over the triglyph. The the Doric order is one of the more complex in terms of the uh, in terms of the entablature, especially with the the triglyphs. So I'm dividing the Ionic cornice again into four pieces. And so we're basically drawing the, uh, the corona now. And so here, very similar to the Tuscan, the corona is basically extending right down from that 45 degree line that we drew previously. And the Corinthian and the Cabazit will basically be done in the same way also. So what we're going to focus on now is drawing the bases of the columns. 
So as we said previously, all of the columns are half a diameter tall. So we're going to focus on the, the Tuscan first. The base is divided into two pieces. The bottom of it is the plinth. And the plinth for uh, the Tuscan order is half the height of the base. So it's going to be a, a quarter of a diameter tall. And all of the plinths for all of the orders are, are 8 sixths wide. So we're going to lay out the plinth first, and then we're going to draw a couple of diagonal lines just to, to, uh, to connect back to the main column itself. In a future video, again, we may lay out the, the detailed moldings on the top of the base, but for now we'll just simplify that with a diagonal line. Now the Doric is done in a similar way. So the base, again, is a half a diameter tall. The plinth on the very bottom is uh, half of that in height, so a quarter of a diameter tall, and then again 8 sixths wide. So we'll lay out that plinth first and then draw diagonals just to connect back to the column. Now the Ionic, the Ionic, Corinthian, and Composite all have a shorter plinth. Their plinth is only one-sixth of a diameter tall. So you can see Tuscan and Doric have a taller plinth. Ionic, Corinthian, and Composite have shorter plinths. But again, all eight sixths of a diameter, um, eight sixths wide for the plinth. And so that's it in a nutshell. That's basically all the basic proportions for all of the five orders: the Tuscan, Doric, Ionic, Corinthian, and Composite. And again, in a future workshop, I think we're going to we're going to jump in and and design each of these in in a greater level of detail. Start looking at those smaller moldings. But laying out the overall proportions is really key when you're designing architecture in the classic styles. The overall proportions of the columns are uh, are critical and uh, hopefully you found this interesting and, and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks.